Welcome to the Canadian Business Quarterly Podcast, where we speak with Canada's most influential industry leaders on the business and economic development issues taking place across the country. You can stay up to date with all of our content, including our publications, newsletters, and podcasts by visiting www.thecbq.ca and clicking on subscribe. Today's guest is Jay Sproul, president of Sproul Insurance. Jay, thanks for joining us today. Thanks very much for having me. So can you tell us about the origins of Sproul Insurance? Yeah, I'd be happy to. I think maybe... uh... To, to tell you about Sproul Insurance, we'll have to talk a, a little bit about me and my background. Certainly, it's one of those situations, I think, where, you know, you start from the bottom and you work your way up. So I started in the business back in 2003, just kind of fell into the business in a customer service uh, role with a different brokerage and learned the ins and outs of the insurance business and, uh, and all the products and the services and understanding the customer you know, moved into a sales role after that, which I really had had an affinity for, really enjoyed uh, meeting new customers, uh, whether it be face-to-face or learning their businesses, uh, understanding what it is that they they needed and, and all about them. Um, and then, you know, later I moved into a management role at that, uh, at that brokerage. Uh, I had an opportunity to uh, buy in an equity position in my uh, list of clientele, which was very exciting for me. Uh, and then I guess by you know, 2012 or thereabouts, um, I could see changes happening in the industry. And um, I, I, I think I had a, a real vision of what I wanted to do and, and bring to the table. And I was at an age where I could take on a little bit more risk and, and was pretty excited about maybe what I could do in the industry. And to that end, I uh, made an offer to purchase my book of clientele. And, and, um, and then from there, I actually went out and met with various uh, top 10 insurance companies uh, operating in Canada and was able to obtain contracts with them to place my business with. And by May of 2013, I was able to open Sproul Insurance Inc., uh, a full service general insurance brokerage, which uh, has been helping out Albertans ever since. Very good. So you said you're full service. Why don't we go through the range of products that that's available to customers? Definitely. So we are a full service uh, brokerage with respect to products and advice. I think that if uh, folks are looking for uh, a product with the word insurance in it, that's something that we can certainly tackle. You know, a, a broad swath of what we have to offer is, you know, obviously automobile insurance, whether that be personal or uh, commercial insurance for that, uh, personal property insurance. Uh, we're talking home insurance, condos, rented dwellings, seasonal dwellings, um, things of that nature. Uh, commercial insurance. So we're talking business insurance uh, for, for small business, medium and large, uh, whether that be retail or wholesale or uh, professional services, contractors, uh, pretty much any type of business we can find solutions for. And then we wrap it all together uh, with life insurance, you know, term life insurance. And, and uh, one of the, the, the newest products that we have to offer actually that we're incredibly proud of is, is a high valued homeowners insurance product. So um, it's a very specialized niche product that uh, uh, we actually have available. Uh, we have the availability of, of really unique products. Uh, and we're one of a few brokers that have access to uh, this line of business. And so uh, that's, that's what we have to offer. You know, what do you think it, uh, over the time and your success, what do you think that you guys do perhaps differently from competitors in the same space? Sure. Well, the space is big. It's a very large sandbox. And I think there's a lot of different ways uh, to operate within it. Uh, we certainly take an omni approach. We're very flexible. We, we like to do business the way that the customer wants to do business. And I, I think if we look at the history of time with insurance, uh, maybe it started as a brick and mortar situation where uh, customers were going to uh, an insurance agent's office, uh, obtaining insurance that way. And, and really, I think over the last maybe 10 years or so, there's been a real pendulum switch to uh, the digital online space. Um, and, and so we sit you know, somewhere in the middle. And, and I think moving to the digital space, um, our competitors have, have tried to make insurance seem uh, very simple. And it can be in some respects. Uh, marketing departments will certainly um, want customers to think that. But these are very, very complicated uh, products. They're contracts for service. And and, and so they really need uh, 
Um, you know, customers need people to help uh, navigate that. And so we bring that, you know, the hand-holding approach with uh, the digital approach. And, and, and like I say, we fit somewhere in the middle. So whether customers want to meet us face-to-face, either at our office or, or at their place of business, or certainly do, um, you know, complete the process online, um, we can cert- certainly uh, accommodate all those facets. When we were originally speaking, I was quite surprised that, that there's been some, um, you know, interesting effects because of the COVID situation. Do you want to just take us through what what you've been seeing, excuse me, seeing and dealing with? Yeah, I think you know we could probably hit this from a few different perspectives. Um, you know, certainly from you know our team perspective, um, uh, in the customers' eyes, and then and then certainly the, the insurance companies. Um, luckily, from from our angle, um, with our staff and, and team, we had already put the the infrastructure in place prior to COVID hitting, which we're certainly thankful for, having the ability for staff to to work outside of the office, and so um, we were able to really just flip a switch. Um, so so the learning curve for us was very very easy and simple. Um, I, I think the customers had a little bit of a harder time with it. Um, especially because we're talking about a lot of different demographics and a lot of different age ranges and, and uh, comfort levels with, with doing business uh, online. And of course we had to really shift uh, to that position. Um, So a lot of time was spent with, with customers actually teaching them how to um, use the online infrastructure and communicate with us in a, in a different way. Uh, If we look at it uh, industry-wide from, from uh, a provider standpoint, the insurance company, you know, it actually had some positive impact impact in, in certain ways. Uh, you know, claims for, for for one thing we can talk about. Um, you know, less frequency of claims. You know, less vehicles on the road. Um, right. and, and then and then from a you know home standpoint, we're we're seeing you know staff actually working from home and and that would normally be downtown or commuting and and so they're able to mitigate problems that were happening at home. Um, and so we're actually seeing a little bit of a decline um, in claims frequency on, on property insurance too. And so there's definitely some some positives uh, as well as the negatives. So uh, I think that seems to be a, a good segue. And I'd like to ask you about, you know, what's happening in the insurance space more broadly at an industry level? Yeah, I think maybe we can drill down a little bit to Alberta. Um, you know, the space in general is is, is vast um, as a mature business um, you know in a mature life cycle uh, insurance uh, is is still ever changing um, things that come that maybe are top of mind um, you know in Alberta for instance we've moved to a direct compensation model for automobile insurance and of course I'm not going to explain that to to your listeners here today that would be quite boring but you know we, we've had to to navigate these changes and, and certainly, it, it brings an importance um, to deal with uh, a good insurance company. And so we're really having to communicate to customers, um, you know, some of these changes. Um, that's one aspect. Certainly other things affecting um, the industry is, is climate change. Um, it's having a huge impact on the availability of insurance as well as, as cost. Um, as urbanization continues to happen, especially in Western Canada with two large cities, Calgary and Edmonton, um, you know, when bad things happen, they, they tend to hit significant uh, areas. So whether we're talking about flooding or, or hail, uh, we're seeing the frequency of those weather events happen more and more. And so, you know, insurance companies are really, you know, trying to navigate how do we, you know, still provide a high level of coverage and, you know, mitigate the, the increase in costs. So that, that's certainly another thing. And then, you know, from my perspective, um, you know, the business is changing a lot too. Uh, there's a huge consolidation um, in the brokerage uh, industry, which comes with some positives and negatives uh, from my perspective uh, as well. We're seeing a huge influx of capital to some of the larger players, which are buying up a lot of the smaller mom and pop brokerages, uh, you know, maybe in, in generations past, uh, some of these brokerages would be handed down to uh, future generations or, or, or sold to other individuals, but we're really seeing larger brokerage corporations coming in and, and buying up. And so we're finding this really neat uh, area to kind of settle in because we're finding a lot of customers um, don't want to be caught up in that mix. And so um, we're certainly finding as a, as a medium-sized brokerage um, some real advantages in that. You had said your business is already uh, mature. It's been around for a while. So what are your plans in the medium to longer term for the business? 
Yeah, I think off the top, we talked about um, the fact that we're a real referral uh, based marketing uh, business. So goals for us is really just making uh, more connections with referral sources. So uh, like minded businesses, uh, complementary businesses like you know, real estate agents or um, car dealers or, or lawyers or um, uh, those kinds of things, um, just to expand our our reach um, to a to a customer base. Um, certainly, um, uh, we also want to, uh, like I talked about earlier, with the high valued home insurance, uh, bring to market more specialized services for for our clients and and uh, and create a situation where we're providing specialized products for for uh, a number of people. And then growth and expansion, I think. You know, um, you know, we're definitely Alberta based. Um, there's lots and lots of room to grow in this province. Um, but I think, you know, if we look long term down the road, um, hopefully there's opportunity to work outside the province. Before we finish up today, is there anything else that you'd like to add or have not had a chance to address? Well, you know, I think uh, I've had a really good opportunity to talk about myself and certainly my business. And maybe that's enough about me. I, I, I wouldn't mind taking you know, a moment just to, to, to shine a light on Alberta itself and, and maybe Calgary. Um, it's really exciting to see, you know, our mojo coming back. Uh, we certainly mm-hmm. moved our office uh, downtown Calgary uh, just before COVID hit. Uh, we started to see um, some excitement happen downtown. And, and, you know, obviously, you know, Alberta is an oil and gas province, but um, I'm seeing some excitement, um, seeing other types of businesses come downtown and, and repopulate. So we're seeing you know, finance, IT, uh, green energy, and these kinds of things. And so if you've got any listens, listeners that are across Canada um, that are looking for a place to, to hang their hat, um, definitely look to Alberta because it's, uh, it's up and coming again. Uh, but other than that, I certainly want to thank you for your time in organizing this and, and for your listeners uh, for tuning in. Well, Jay, thank you very much for your time today. I appreciate it. Thank you. This has been a production of the Canadian Business Quarterly, a division of Romulus Rising Proprietary Limited. All rights reserved. You can stay up to date with the Canadian Business Quarterly, including our publications, newsletters, and podcasts by visiting www.thecbq.ca and clicking on subscribe.